Hi everyone. Today I am making some keto pumpkin cranberry bread pudding. It's going to be perfect as something that you could eat, uh, say for brunch uh, around Thanksgiving or the Christmas holidays. A nice weekend brunch or even a dessert dish. Anita from ketogenicwoman.com where I share keto and carnivore recipes and other cooking ideas. If you are new here, welcome. Please check out some of my other videos. For those of you coming back to watch again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for watching my videos. Okay, so today's recipe is, uh, is keto. It's not carnivore. It's not protein sparing. It's a regular keto dish. This recipe, this uh, pumpkin cranberry bread pudding has actually been on my blog for a few years and I, I have printed out the recipe card so that I can use it for the pudding part. The only thing that has changed about it is that I used to use chaffles for all these type of things and chaffles are very you know, to get the right consistency for the bread pudding, they're very cheese heavy. So I am making the same recipe, but I am using some protein sparing bread. Um, now this bread is, you know, I had been doing some experimenting. It's got a yellowish color because I put some egg yolks in this one. Um, so it was good, but uh, I, I want to turn it into the leftovers into bread pudding. If you take any protein sparing bread recipe, your favorite one, um, use Maria Emmerich's recipe. Um, like if, if you like that one, you can use any of mine or Wendy's or Janet Greta's, whatever your favorite bread recipe is, uh, use half a recipe to make this, um, not a full one. So, so this is the equivalent to half a recipe of any protein sparing bread. Um, and I'll link a couple down below that for examples. So, so that's going to be the basis of it. The other great thing about this recipe is around this time of year, um, being American Thanksgiving, uh, I'm in Canada, we've already had our Thanksgiving, um, but there's always leftover things like leftover pumpkin, maybe you made a pumpkin pie and only used half the can. Um, cranberries are abundant. Um, I always try to have a few of these. They're very keto friendly, low in carbs, high in fiber, and colorful and festive at this time of year. So I feel like I'm making use of things that are generally around the house and great for a holiday type um, dessert, brunch, even a breakfast dish, you know, in place of waffles or something. It, it's a very versatile dish. So we're gonna get started. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350. And I have a nine by 13 casserole dish. And I'm going to uh, do my mother's old trick of using the butter left on her, her butter foil to grease it. Um, I am out of my, my favorite uh, spray. And it's hard to find too. I was buying um, a coconut, an organic coconut spray and I haven't been able to find it lately. So I'm gonna have to maybe look online. But this, this works. And there's probably like, you know, maybe a quarter teaspoon of, of butter in this foil. Okay, so that's that's buttered up. So the, the other thing, the, if you do go to my blog, I will link this below if you wanted to print out the, the pudding part of the recipe, you can do that. I've doubled it for, for this uh, big pan. So just wanted to let you know that. So I'm going to start off with six eggs, six whole eggs, no egg yolks. I need a break from egg yolks today, or sorry, I need a break from egg whites is what I meant to say. Okay, so that was six large eggs. And I'm going to put in some vanilla. I'm putting in one tablespoon and a teaspoon. I'm putting in some pumpkin 
pie spice. Um, I do make my own mixture um, and, and I'll just provide a link to to the mixture if you wanted to make your own or if you have some that you already buy and it you know has no sugar then go ahead and use that. It says two teaspoons. I probably have less than a tablespoon in here so I'm dumping it in. I'll have to make more and I'm going to use a half a cup of sweetener. Um, you can use erythritol. I think I'm going to use half and half. Uh, just hang on because I'm running low on allulose. A, a, a lot of times I like to use allulose for baking because it has nice baking properties, but I'm running low, so I have to order some more and I'm going to use half allulose. So I'm using a quarter cup of just regular Swerve or any type of erythritol, monk fruit would work as well. So quarter cup of that and a quarter cup of allulose. Allulose is hard to find in Canada, almost impossible, but I have found a source that ships to Canada and I'm gonna link, I have two, I'm gonna link them both below and uh, just go with the better deal. So that's my sweetener and I have a cup of canned pumpkin. Make sure when you buy canned pumpkin, and you probably know this, but I'll mention it anyways, there's two types. There's pumpkin pie filling, and there's pureed pumpkin, or it'll just say pure pumpkin or something like that. Read the label because the pumpkin pie filling is not the same, it's a sugary mixture. And what else? Cream. I'm going to put in one cup of cream, heavy cream. If you can get the organic without any additives, that's even better. Oh boy, this is going to be one of those ones that, that does not want to open nicely. Fine. Every now and then. Okay, here we are. My beater head. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm just going to stir this a bit. It doesn't have to be whipped up to foam or peaks or anything like that. Uh, it just needs to be well combined. So um, before I take that off of there, what we want to do is put our bread crumbs or bread cubes in here and spread them out nicely, even layer. All right, and then we are just going to pour it over top. So I, what I want to do is just flatten out the pieces that are floating so that the uh, pudding custard uh, gets, gets into the bread. Now here's, here's what you can do. Say you've got company coming tomorrow, you can stop right here and cover this up with some wrap and put it in the fridge overnight and bake it tomorrow. Um, that does give the bread cubes a chance to soak up all the pudding, um, custard pudding mix. But you don't, it, it works either way. You don't have to do it that way. Um, it's just an option. Okay, so those are pushed down and I want my cranberries now. They can be fresh or frozen. I'm going to use a cup. This also tastes amazing with blueberries if you happen to only have blueberries in your freezer. Just going to uh, push those down a little bit as well. So. 
I'm going to now put um, some uh, Bestie Brown Sugar on top. I think in the, rest, the original recipe it says uh, just to sprinkle with some granulated swerve. I think this is going to taste amazing with some, some of this stuff. So I'll give this a try. This stuff just, it's so much like real brown sugar, it's kind of scary. Sometimes I'm like, do I trust this? <laughs> you know, when something tastes too close to the original. I'm probably all in all using a couple of tablespoons here. Let's get one more little clump going here. And because I didn't have really too much um, in the way of pumpkin spice, I'm gonna give this a sprinkle of cinnamon. There we go. Okay, so that is gonna go into the oven as soon as uh, not quite there, but almost. We're gonna put this in the oven uh, for 30 minutes or until it's set. So you can tell it's set just by jiggling it, or you can stick a toothpick in, um, but definitely, oh, there we go. Oven is ready. I always wanna do a little dance. <laughs> Uh, definitely give it the jiggle test too. You want it to be firmly set like a custard or a pudding. Okay, here we go. See you back in about half an hour. Okay. This is ready to come out. It's been 30 minutes. I gave it the jiggle test already and it looks and smells amazing. It is going to need a little bit of a cool down though before I show you what it looks like inside. So while we're waiting, oh look at Teddy over here. He looks so cute. Are you waiting too? Are you waiting to see what I have? So while we're waiting for this to cool down, I've got mail. This came to my post office box. Let's, it doesn't, uh, I can't tell who it's from or anything. And uh, let's see. Oh, got a pretty card. I love these cards. Hi Anita, so very grateful for you and inspiration giving hope to so many women like me that there is a real light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, you do it with class and grace and humor sprinkled throughout. Just hope you haven't made the long trip to the gourmet warehouse as yet. Fondly DM. I have a clue but I don't want to say, oh my goodness. For those of you who watch my videos regularly, you know that I have a love affair with this Italian seasoning. And no, I have not had a chance to go out and get any. I've tried a couple of different grocery store ones lately just because it's such an effort to go into Vancouver for me these days. And I'm sorry, I have to open it so I can inhale it because it's been, it's been a few weeks since I've, <laughs> I've run out. <laughs> it smells so good. Thank you, DM. I wish I knew who you were. Oh, that is so nice. I mean, it just, it's, it smells so fresh. And it, I just, this is my favorite Italian seasoning. Basil, oregano, marjoram, garlic, parsley, onion, chili pepper, pepper. Now, it's weird because, uh, you know, I am sensitive to pepper, but not when it's in here. And it is the last ingredient, so I guess there's not enough. But thank you so much. I appreciate this. This, this should last me a week or so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It should last me, you know, a, a few months, I hope. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, 
I'm going to see you back. This probably needs a good 10, 15, 20 minutes to, you know, we want it to be really cool. Then I'll give you, I'll, I'll cut a piece to show you what it looks like inside. I am going to be freezing this because it's carnivore month for me, but I'll give you all of the um, different ways I suggest that you serve it and toppings and that sort of thing. So we'll see you back when it's cooled down. Okay, we're back. I'm ready to uh, cut into this. Uh, my plan is to freeze it um, and bring it out, you know, during the holidays um, or when people are here, or maybe I'll bring it somewhere, I don't know. Um, I wanted to give you some ways to serve it. Uh, you can just cut a piece, uh, eat it warm uh, with some sugar-free maple syrup on it. You can also, um, one of my favorite ways would be to have it warm with some keto vanilla ice cream on top. That is awesome. You can also have some plain whipped cream on top. Um, yeah, so those, you know, those, those are just some suggestions. So I'm just gonna grab a little plate and cut it. Oh, one more thing that I wanted to say, um, I know that some of you make your own, or, or maybe you made my cranberry sauce. I have a sugar-free cranberry sauce recipe that um, a lot of people make. It's really simple. If you have leftovers of that, instead of putting the cranberries on, you could just kind of, uh, you know, dot this thing with that leftover cranberry sauce. That's also delicious. Oh, and I just remembered one more way to serve this would be to make an icing like just a, an icing that you would drizzle over top. And then that almost makes this like a, like a cake dessert of some kind. And uh, the camera crew seems pretty excited about that option. Maybe I'm going to be doing that later. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just, it still isn't as cool down as I would like, but I did want to just cut a little piece out and show it to you. Um, yeah, it definitely needs more cooling before I, you know, put it in here for freezing, but it's still, let me see here, it might fall apart. But you should be able to see what it's like. Okay, so what you can see there is uh, that kind of pudding custard that the pumpkin and cream make. I think what I'll do is I, I will put some ice cream or something on top later and take a picture of how that looks and everything and then, and then you can see and that'll be included um, somewhere uh, on the video at the end. Um, but I'm just going to take a little bite, give it a try. Mm. <clears throat> this is amazing. You have to try this. I mean, it's so perfect if you've got some leftover protein sparing bread. Maybe you tried one of the new variations and you didn't like it. Don't throw it away. You can salvage anything and um, this combination of pumpkin and cranberries and the brown sugar on top. I mean, you honestly don't even really need to add anything else to this. It's that good. Um, but if you wanted to take it over the top, there are things you could add to this. So I hope you try it. I hope you enjoy it. And let me know if you do and what you think of it. We'll see you on the next video. Um, okay, so I just uh, dressed one up a little bit just to give you a serving idea. I mean, to me, this could even replace a dessert at Thanksgiving or Christmas or, or a holiday party. Um, it could replace pumpkin pie because there's, I mean, all I smell right now is pumpkin, cinnamon, you know, that whole festive holiday smell. It just smells like Christmas to me. I just put some unsweetened whipped cream on top 
It's about two tablespoons and then a drizzle of sugar-free maple syrup. Uh, this pan would make about eight servings in a round, you know, if you did, served it in ramekins like this. So just a serving suggestion idea for those of you looking for holiday ideas that you can eat as well as your guests. They will never know that this is keto. In fact, they will think you're breaking your diet when they see you eating this. So um, yeah, have fun with it. brunch uh, around Thanksgiving or the Christmas holidays. Um, a nice weekend breakfast dish. Nah, it's not a, really a breakfast dish. No. <laughs> a nice weekend brunch or even a dessert dish. I'm, I'm an <laughs> Or I share keto and carnivore. <laughs> yeah, carnivore. I haven't had any eggnog punch, I promise. Why can't I do it today? That was so nice, I can't believe it.